Jonathan Jenkins was an ordinary student at the University of New Mexico, his life revolving around lectures, textbooks, assignments, and the occasional party. The law school was demanding, but Jonathan was ambitious. His roommate, Tyler, was a year ahead of him in the School of Engineering. Together, they shared a nondescript student dorm, a small two-bedroom space with shared kitchen and living area that had seen better days. Tyler was always a bit of a mystery. He was outgoing, seemingly well-liked, but often gave Jonathan an unsettling feeling. He couldn't quite place it. Was it Tyler's random bursts of laughter, his penchant for leaving things half done, or his unpredictable mood swings? Nonetheless, they managed to coexist without much friction, both of them engrossed in their own academic struggles. One day, Tyler announced he was leaving for a vacation. He had finished his exams and was off to enjoy some much-needed relaxation. He packed his bag, grabbed his worn-out leather jacket, flashed Jonathan a mischievous grin, and exited the dorm, leaving behind a rather oppressive silence. With Tyler's departure, Jonathan found himself confronted by an unanticipated tide of boredom. His exams were done as well, yet unlike Tyler, he was devoid of any impending adventures. His textbooks lay scattered on the table, a visual reminder of the grueling year. They no longer offered solace. Instead, they stood as silent testament to his solitude and the echoing emptiness of the dorm room. In an effort to distract himself, Jonathan turned to his trusted friend, the Internet. As he aimlessly scrolled through the sea of memes, tweets, and posts, he stumbled upon something unusual. It was a meme about a satanic ritual, the kind you'd laugh at and scroll past. But Jonathan, with his sudden abundance of time and an underlying sense of boredom, decided to explore it further. Intrigued and curious, he clicked on the link embedded in the meme. It took him to a subreddit dedicated to Satanic Rituals, a dark corner of the internet filled with eerie stories, chants, diagrams of pentagrams, and detailed descriptions of rituals. One post explained the process of a particular ritual described as a doorway to the unseen. In that quiet dorm room, Jonathan could hear the faint hum of his laptop and the soft ticking of the wall clock. The world of satanic rituals opened before him on his screen. He had no idea he was about to set a terrifying chain of events in motion. Jonathan, driven by curiosity and the monotony of solitude, delved deeper into the dark recesses of the subreddit. Every click led him further into the grim world of satanic rituals. He read about incantations, sacrifices, and how to draw the perfect pentagram. His initial trepidation gave way to a perverse sense of excitement. The more he read, the more curious he became. He was drawn to the darkness, fascinated by the forbidden. He decided to conduct a ritual, not because he believed in it, but to break the monotony of his days, to experience something beyond his ordinary existence. He meticulously studied the steps, jotting down notes, the blue light from his laptop screen casting eerie shadows on his face. The ritual required a pentagram, a sacrifice, a dimly lit room, and the performer's absolute faith. Jonathan decided to use a chicken as the sacrifice. He found a small shop on the outskirts of town that sold live chickens. With the creature clutched in his hand, he returned to his dorm. At midnight, the dorm was silent. He drew the pentagram, lit the candles, and placed the chicken in the middle. Reading from his notes, he began to chant in a low voice, the language foreign to his tongue. The shadows flickered on the walls as the ritual progressed, each moment stretching into an eternity. A cold breeze swept through the room, causing him to shiver. Despite the chilling ambiance, nothing extraordinary happened. No demonic figure appeared, no voice spoke to him from the other side. The chicken lay lifeless in the center of the pentagram, its blood staining the floor. He felt a pang of guilt for the pointless death of an innocent creature. A wave of disappointment washed over Jonathan. He sat in the dimly lit room, the dead chicken in front of him, and the smeared pentagram under it. The atmosphere was thick with a combination of death and crushed expectations. He looked around, his heart heavy with regret. What a fool I am, 
Jonathan muttered to himself. He had expected something, a sign, a vision, or perhaps a sense of power. Instead, all he felt was emptiness, the crushing weight of his own foolishness pressing down on him. The thrill of dabbling in the occult had evaporated, replaced by a cold sense of dread and regret. He cleaned up the mess, scrubbing away the chicken's blood and erasing the pentagram. The candles were extinguished one by one, each puff of smoke a testament to his foolish curiosity. As he finally crawled into bed, the clock struck two. That night, as he drifted into a restless sleep, he wished he could erase the last few hours. He wished he had never stumbled upon the satanic ritual meme, that he had not allowed himself to be drawn into this grim world. Little did he know, his journey had only just begun. Jonathan woke up the following morning, his sleep plagued by nightmares of devilish symbols and eerie chants. His eyes fell on a peculiar sight. On his desk, a piece of parchment stood out against the mundane clutter. He squinted to clear his vision, realizing with a jolt that the envelope was stained with a dark, dried liquid. Blood. On the front of the envelope, his name, Jonathan, was scrawled in an eerily elegant hand, also in blood. A shiver ran down his spine, his heart pounding against his ribcage. Swallowing hard, he reached out to the envelope with trembling hands and tore it open. Inside was a single sheet of parchment, the edges singed, giving it an ancient appearance. He unfolded it to find an assignment. It was simple yet chilling. Steal from the one you know. Take something they hold dear and it shall be yours. A bolt of fear shot through Jonathan. He looked around the dorm room, feeling the walls closing in. The sickening reality began to sink in. Had he, in his idle curiosity, invoked something malevolent? His mind spun into overdrive. It was a prank, he tried to reassure himself. Perhaps Tyler's idea of a cruel joke. But the blood on the envelope, the vivid nightmares, and the eerie atmosphere he now noticed hinted at something far more sinister. As the day wore on, the assignment weighed heavy on his mind. He felt watched, the unseen eyes of some diabolical entity monitoring his every move. In the end, he rationalized that he would steal something trivial, something Tyler would barely notice. Perhaps then the unsolicited horror would cease. With newfound determination, Jonathan chose his target, Tyler's prized baseball cap. Tyler was quite fond of it but rarely wore it. Surely it was harmless enough. That night, he sneaked into Tyler's room and retrieved the cap, his heart pounding in his chest. Once back in his room, Jonathan held up the stolen cap and the assignment. His eyes darted around the room, half expecting some spectral figure to manifest. But nothing happened. It was anticlimactic, but a part of him felt relieved. He then did as the instructions had demanded. He burned the parchment. As the flames consumed the ominous message, a strange calm washed over him. He felt the invisible gaze lift off him, the room's atmosphere lightening. He tossed the baseball cap onto his bed, deciding he'd return it before Tyler's return. As he climbed into his bed, he couldn't help but feel a flicker of fear deep within him. He'd crossed a line that should have remained untouched, dabbling in a realm of darkness he didn't understand. Little did he know, this was only the beginning of a harrowing journey into a sinister world that thrived on fear, and it had just claimed its latest victim, Jonathan Jenkins. After the first letter, the assignments kept coming, steadily increasing in their intensity and depravity. Each assignment was a test, each scarlet letter a key to a door he wished he never had to open. The first task read, Deceive a friend. Make them believe a lie. He thought of Peter, his closest ally in the battlefield of law school. He saw no other choice but to lead his friend astray. He staged a farcical scenario of Peter's most cherished textbook being stolen by an unknown student, watching as his friend's trust in his classmates waned. The deep betrayal etched on Peter's face remained etched on Jonathan's conscience, but there was no turning back. Next, a crimson letter demanded he break a trust. 
This time, the task involved Clara, a girl he had been close to for months. Their relationship was blossoming, teetering on the edge of something more. But the task was clear. Jonathan found himself concocting an elaborate tale about an affair with another girl, shattering the trust Clara had placed in him. The shock and hurt in her eyes cut deeper than any knife. Yet again, he had completed his gruesome task. The relentless sequence of assignments escalated in their cruelty. Harm an innocent, the next letter demanded. Jonathan, caught in this grim cycle, found himself tripping an unsuspecting elderly man on his nightly walk, causing him to fall and sprain his wrist. With each malicious act, he loathed himself more, but the terror of the potential repercussions of defiance was an unstoppable force. As days rolled on, his dormitory, once a haven, began to resemble a house of horrors. Jonathan's mind was a whirling storm of paranoia and terror. Every unexpected sound, every flicker of shadow made him jump. The crimson letters felt like ticking bombs waiting to explode. Then the most terrifying assignment of all arrived. The scarlet letter read, Kill a Human. Jonathan's heart hammered in his chest, and he felt as if the ground was slipping from under his feet. He couldn't. He wouldn't do it. This was a line he wouldn't cross. Days later, his mother was admitted to the hospital in critical condition. It was as if his worst fears had been realized. His mind was in turmoil, connecting his mother's sudden illness with his refusal to carry out the horrifying task. Was this a punishment for his disobedience? When he returned from the hospital, a new letter was waiting for him. The message was ominous. Punishment for your disobedience. Complete your task or worse will follow. The words, sharp as daggers, pierced his heart. Terrified for his mother and himself, Jonathan saw no other option. He was trapped in a nightmare, and he saw no way out. Caught in a lethal web of deceit, Jonathan was forced to grapple with the monstrous reality of his situation. The association between his mother's critical condition and the task he had dared to defy was a chilling comprehension that sent a shiver down his spine. This realization added a cruel weight on his conscience and left him with no other choice but to surrender to his fear. Making the decision was horrifying, executing it even worse. The blood letter had been clear. Kill a human. He selected a stranger, a homeless man who frequently lingered around the campus at night, unnoticed by the world. The remorse was immediate, but a fear more intense than he had ever experienced compelled him to follow through with the atrocious act. Jonathan meticulously recalled the horrifying details of the murder as if it happened in slow motion. The evening was eerie quiet when he approached the homeless man in the shadowed alley. His heart pounded like a war drum in his chest. He remembered the man's startled expression when he showed him the sharp blade of a broken bottle. There was a brief struggle. The man tried to defend himself, but his feeble attempts were no match against Jonathan's desperation-fueled strength. Jonathan would never forget the life leaving the man's eyes, that final moment when the light faded and was replaced by a vacant stare. It was a sight that would continue to haunt his dreams, a constant reminder of the monstrous act he had committed. Following the act, Jonathan hastily burned the evidence. He gathered the man's few possessions into a pile and set them on fire, watching as the last physical traces of the man's existence were swallowed by the hungry flames. He prayed that this would be the end of the nightmare, that there would be no more horrifying assignments, and that somehow he could find redemption in this wretched nightmare. Yet every fiber of his being cried out in regret and despair. He had hoped that surrendering to fear would put an end to the nightmare. Instead, he found himself sinking deeper into an abyss of dread from which there seemed to be no escape. Jonathan was caught in a web of deceit, a pawn in a sadistic game. He could only hope that the horror would end soon. Caught in the throes of his guilt-ridden conscience, Jonathan found himself unprepared for what came next. His life took another unexpected turn with the sudden return of Tyler. His ex-roommate walked into their shared dorm, 
the surprise evident on his face as he surveyed the mess that Jonathan's life had turned into. The element of surprise doubled when, closely following Tyler, came the sound of police sirens growing louder. A rush of adrenaline surged through Jonathan's veins as the sounds of urgency and authority flooded the dorm grounds. His heart pounded in his chest like a captive bird, each beat echoing the unspoken dread that had taken hold of him. Before he could piece together what was happening, their dorm room was swarmed by police. Commands were barked out, echoing off the walls, and within moments, Jonathan was pushed against the wall, a cold set of handcuffs clasped around his wrists. Fear, panic, and betrayal swirled in his mind as he was read his rights. His gaze darted towards Tyler, who stood at a distance, his face a mask of shocked innocence. The ride to the police station was a blur, the reality of his arrest slowly sinking in. His mind was a whirlpool of despair and betrayal. As he sat in the sterile interrogation room, his life felt like a nightmare he desperately wished to wake up from. The ultimate betrayal came when the horrifying truth was revealed to him. All along, it had been Tyler. The assignments, the blood letters, everything pointed back to his roommate. Tyler had been playing a sadistic game, making Jonathan dance on the puppet strings of his masterfully orchestrated scheme. As the truth sunk in, Jonathan was filled with an overwhelming sense of disbelief and anger. His mind reeled as he pieced together the sinister jigsaw. The realization that he had been manipulated into committing heinous acts was a bitter pill to swallow. The trust he'd placed in his friend was shattered, replaced with a seething feeling of hatred and betrayal. Tyler's return marked the end of Jonathan's nightmare, but it also signaled the beginning of his life in the harsh light of guilt, shame, and regret. His journey from a promising law student to a manipulated murderer was a path he never thought he'd tread, but he had. And now, he was left to face the consequences of his actions, steeped in the bitter realization of his friend's deceit. The court trial was a whirlwind of events. Accusations hurled, defenses mounted, but the evidence was incriminating. Jonathan stood, seemingly calm, in the eye of the storm, desperately trying to pin the blame on Tyler. But with no proof of the satanic assignments or Tyler's involvement, his pleas fell on deaf ears. The court saw him for what the evidence showed. A murderer. His self-loathing was more potent than ever. He had fallen into Tyler's trap, committed a heinous crime, and now he was going to pay for it. The harsh reality stung more than any physical pain ever could. The part of him that had held onto hope, onto the possibility of redemption, was withering away. When the gavel hit, its echo sounded the death knell of his freedom. He was sentenced for a murder he did commit, but under circumstances nobody would believe. The verdict was a foregone conclusion. Guilty. Jonathan felt his heart plummet into an abyss, his mind reeling from the finality of the decision. As he was led to his cell, the horror of his situation truly set in. Jonathan was not merely a convict. He was a victim. A victim of manipulation, of deceit, and of his own fears. The irony was sharp and cruel. He had attempted to avoid one nightmare and had landed in at another. As the cell door closed behind him, he was left alone with his guilt, his regret, and the haunting memory of his actions.